thus far. Fourth game of the day, Panama upset Mexico by five in the first game. Canada wins by ten. Argentina, right before this one, beat Puerto Rico. And it's time for our State Farm starting lineups. And we begin with the quote-unquote home team for this game. It is Venezuela. You've got Jose Vargas. You've got Grievous Vasquez in the backcourt on the wing. You've got Hector Romero and up front Barrios and Bayona and the head coach for the Venezuelan national team, Nestor Salazar, and he gets animated, he gets on the referees, and he should be just a part of the entertainment that we bring you from the entertainment capital of the world. And you know what's going on with Venezuela? What about Brazil? Let's show you the starting lineups, State Farm style for the Brazilian national team. In the backcourt, it is Marcelo Machada had a bad game in game one. Barbosa, 30 in his first game. Silva on the wing as well. And up front, they've got Murillo Becker and Tiago Splitter, who was just drafted by the San Antonio Spurs in the 2007 NBA Draft, 28th overall. You may be wondering, hey, where's Anderson Marichal? Where's Nene? As you look at Lula Ferreira, the head coach of the Brazilian national team, I've got answers. You will see Nene off the bench. He is the best sixth man in this tournament. And Anderson Berejao still hasn't put ink to paper on a new contract with the Cleveland Cavaliers, so does not want to risk an injury here that would alter signing with the Cleveland Cavaliers. So they press on without him. But, you know, not only did they win their first game without Anderson Berejao, but late in the game, Splitter and Nene fouled out within about a minute of game time of each other, but it didn't matter. They still took care of Canada by the score of 75-67. And it was those guys, I, in my opinion, Nene coming off the bench. You mentioned Rick being the best six man in this tournament. I happen to agree with you wholeheartedly. Should be starting, but again, it's been very effective. We saw him in the first game coming off the bench, playing against another team's second unit really started to exploit his advantages with his width, with his strength. I thought he was a huge key. Another player you mentioned, Splitter. Tiago Splitter is a guy, sort of like in our previous game, a little bit earlier we saw, uh, we, we, we saw uh, another team's play, we saw Luis Scola, excuse me. That guy likes to get up and down the floor, likes to get in transition, get a lot of touches. Tiago Splitter is of the same ilk. Let's see how effective he could be because he likes and depends on other guys getting getting him involved. Let's see how quickly he gets himself into this game. He was into the game until the DQ late in that opener against Canada. 12 points, nine rebounds for Splitter. He was the second best Brazilian behind Barbosa's 30. Now, the good news for Brazil is in terms of the law of averages, Barbosa did not shoot the ball well in game one despite having 30. He was six of 14 from two point range three of 12 from three-point range and based on how awesome he is at shooting the basketball you gotta believe the percentages are going to go up for him in this game and we are underway Brazil in yellow Venezuela in maroon and the Brazilians will strike first this is Alex Garcia had it knocked away and it goes to Venezuela and they are led by the man number 12 with the ponytail right there on the left part of your screen. That is Hector Romero, 17 per game through the first two games. Uh, Venezuela playing without Oscar Torres, probably the most famous Venezuelan to ever put on a basketball uniform. Not in not in the rotation during this tournament. They've got a lot of other guys you see right there. The main guy for this team, one of the players, Hector Romero, that a little short on that <laughs> layup right there. But a 10-footer only shot at eight feet, Rick. Did I just talk him up? <laughs> Hector, you got to understand, when we talk about you at the start of the game, you can't start the game with an air ball. What I liked about him was in layup lines, Rick. He had his iPod in his ears. Never saw a guy with his tunes on during the middle of a pregame warm-up. Interesting approach. Trying to find the flow, uh, but he hasn't found it yet. No. Maybe, maybe he needs to take the iPod <laughs> with him into regulation play. I would assume he was making his shots before the game. Hector, we're just having fun with you. You mentioned a little bit earlier, this man with the ball right here, we talk about Barbosa. How does he shoot better or a higher percentage than he did in the first game? By a transition. Look for Brazil to really get up and down the floor. Plays into a lot of their athletic players' strengths. Here we got a good opportunity to see them in transition right now. The Brazilian blur, as he is known, Leandro Barbosa splitting the D and drawing the first of many fouls on the Venezuelan national team. And let's talk about how Venezuela has got to that 0 and 2. Well, the Americans took care of them. 112 69. I'm not even smart enough to do the math to figure out how <laughs> wide that margin of victory was. And 
definitely played better in game two, but still lost 80-73 to Canada. And as we said, Brazil, despite being tied late in that game with Canada, got out with an eight-point victory. Well, just so it, it get things out of the way, it was a 43-point difference right there. But See, Venice. that's the Duke education. <laughs> Quick on my feet. University of Minnesota Never, versus Duke. <laughs> Duke's going to win that every time. Never used to be the case. Wasn't always so quick on my feet. But again, here's a team that I think has, when you talk about Venezuela, you can't really gauge where they are against the United States. It's just an unfair test for them, having to, for it be the first game that they play in this tournament to go up against probably the most talent-laden team, the United States team. Probably not a fair assessment right off the bat, but again, Venezuela has been in a lot of these games at the beginning. Look for them to try to sustain runs. It seems like whenever they get behind, they're able to get back in it, but never get over the hump, never make that final play to get this team ahead. Let's see if Venezuela can make a good run on a very strong Brazilian team. Right now, it's still early in the game. Venezuela has an opportunity to tie it up right here. This is Grievous Vasquez, 20-year-old, six-foot-five point guard. And he played high school basketball with Kevin Durant in Rockville, Maryland. And he is a collegiate for Maryland University. He is, in fact, a Terp. Last year with Maryland, about 10 points per game. He was sixth in the ACC in assists. And as I was talking right there, you saw Hector Romero with the turn away. And here he is with the rock knocked away in the post. And Venezuela still with the ball tied at one. There's Murillo Becker. He made all the little plays late in that win over Canada. He sure did. He was very, very effective, especially, I thought, on the defensive end of the floor with his hustle plays. It was contagious when he got himself going. The rest of the team fell in line. Good, strong drive by Hector Romero. Draws the first foul on Tiago Splitter. Hangs his head in disgust. And actually, that foul on Hebert Bayona, not Splitter, but Hector Romero is the best player on this Venezuela national team, at least up front. Grievous Vasquez may be the best player in the backcourt, but they got to have 20-plus out of this guy, this horse right here for this team. And what they also have to do, this young fellow right here, Romero, he's going to have to try to be aggressive under the basket, possibly get guys like Splitter, Nene, hopefully in their case, in foul trouble as well. Best thing to do to go up against the good players is to have them on the bench with foul trouble. Venezuela, another point about this team, Rick, with the exception of Oscar Torres, who is not playing, everybody else on this team is in their 20s as far as age is concerned. So, relatively speaking, Venezuela is a young team. You mentioned Grievous Vasquez, the 6'5 point guard. He's only 20 years old running the show. Let's see how, that, how they fare with a young, inexperienced point guard. Strong pick out there by Murillo, setting up Barbosa, who missed the shot, kept alive by Murillo. Splitter, great back hustle. to Murillo, Becker, and that is great work in the paint by Brazil. Great hustle there by Splitter, not known for his grittiness. He's a tough player, but not known for his love of the physical play, but right there, giving his body up, getting on the floor, and having his team be the beneficiary of a great hustle play. Romero thought he might have had a layup, but a nice little handoff there to Hebert Bayona. And the foul on Murillo Becker. Let's look at Bayona. A little inside passing there from big to big. Nice pass. A little bit too unselfish, though, right there by I, Romero. Well, you're asking a guy who never passed the ball. I was, <laughs> I was the black hole of post play. It goes in, it never comes out. But uh, again, you, you like the fact that he's trying to get his teammates involved, but perhaps his move could have gotten Splitter in foul trouble with an extra foul there. You want to go at their bigs right now. Brazil got caught with one of their perimeter guys late to rotate. Bayona not close on the second. And as I like to say, this is a death game for Venezuela. They are 0-2. They cannot fall to 0-3 if they want to move on to the second stage. There are only four games in the first stage. And as I said, they're 0-2, so they got to make some hay. That was Alex Garcia missing the running finger roll. And back comes Venezuela. Grievous Vasquez with a sweet feed, and the lane is filled by Bayona, and Venezuela on top 5-3. This is a good start for them. They're being aggressive. They're getting out in transition. A lot of the things that they're getting on the offensive end is stemming from their defensive pressure, so this is a good sign for them. Whether or not they can maintain that, we'll find out. Machata. Oh, it's good from deep, and 
If I sounded a little bit surprised, it's because he was miserable in game one. One of nine, just three points for Marcelinho Machada. There's two Marcelinos on this team, Huertas and Machada. Machada coming up with the big basket right there. Six foot seven, 32 year old. Alejandro Barrio spins, lost the dribble. Marillo takes away in a sweet pass to Barbosa. The one man fast break beats everybody. Just not fair. Too easy right there. Just throw it out ahead of him. He will beat everybody down the floor. Case in point right there. Leandro Barbosa with the easy two. Barrios down low to Bayona. Back by Splitter. Bayona's got to take it at him. Passes out, long three, but Venezuela is good, and we are tied at eight. Just over six minutes to go in the first quarter. Alejandro Barrios. You can see what Venezuela's trying to do, trying to go at Tiago Splitter, get him into foul trouble. Great find there by, by, from Bayona. Splitter, back out to Silva. Splitter, Murillo Becker, and no defense from behind by Grievous Vasquez. He seeds the basket, and Brazil goes up two. Yeah, again, you see him right there. He should have been under the basket. Put your body in front of the defender. Late to rotate. Brazil takes advantage of the situation there with an easy two. Off the screen. And that shot missed by Salceda. And back comes Brazil. Machado, sweet dribble move, and the drop-off pass to Splitter, but Splitter was going to the hoop looking for maybe a rebound. Again, we talked about this. Rule number one, if you're a big, a guy's penetrating, always have your hands up. You never know. There may be an opportunity for you to get a bucket right there. You always have to be prepared and ready. Oh, they're saying it was off of Venezuela, off the pass from Machado, so a break for Brazil. They're up 10-8, 525 to go on the first. Venezuela is not trying to easily find their way in this game. They've been aggressive from the start here, and I've been very impressed with the fact that they have not shied away from any kind of aggressive play on the offensive end. They're going at Brazil right now. Splitter attacks and draws a foul, and take your pick. There were three maroon jerseys down there, and the ISO on Romero, but that doesn't always mean the foul was on him. Let's take another look. Now we know the book on Splitter. He's a lefty. You can't let him go left. Make him go to his weak hand right there. You're letting him go to his strength, and you're going to have to eventually pay for it. Right now, Venezuela gets caught with the foul. Thiago Splitter has an opportunity to knock down some shots. That foul was, in fact, on Hector Romero. Splitter hits the first. The lead is three for Brazil. Splitter, 6'11", 22 years old, born in Joinville, Brazil, and drafted 28th overall by the Spurs. Yet another late first-round pick, international style, for the San Antonio Spurs, but he will be with Tao Ceramica once again this upcoming season. He will, again, and maybe it's an opportunity for him to get a lot more playing time. I think the San Antonio Spurs realize with Oberto, Duncan, and Francisco Elson, not a lot of playing time for a splitter, but they're going to ease him in because when you're San Antonio and you're that loaded, you can, Rick. That's a strong move by Hector Romero, shielded his body nicely from Marillo Becker. And Venezuela hanging around with one of the powers in this tournament. Hector Romero and Venezuela down just four as we head to timeout. Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada. The FIBA Americas Championship 2007 rolls on. This is Brazil and Venezuela. And the leading scorer in this game is not Leandro Barbosa. It is Hector Romero of Venezuela. He had seven. And that last basket made it a two-point game, not a four-point game as your incorrect announcer said in that regard. However, I want to talk about Romero, the way he's getting better game after game. He had 11 in the first game against USA, 23 in the seven point loss to Canada. He's already got seven here, Ala. He's on his way to a nice game, and so is Marcelino Machado, his second three early on. Sure is, we talk about Romero, nicknamed Pepito there, the guy who played college ball at the University of New Orleans from 2003 to 2005. Rick was a Sun Belt Conference Player of the Year. He's got a lot of success and a lot of achievement under his belt. A guy who plays with a lot of confidence and a lot of ability. Oh, he almost got the roll on that three-point try with the shot clock running down. Brazil with the rock up five. Here is Leandro Barbosa caught up in the air. Good spacing by Brazil. Brazil trying to join the United States of America and Argentina as the only 2-0 teams in this tournament. This is Silva, way off the mark. And the rebound taken by Venezuela. Long rebound there. 
Rebus Vasquez, you can see the good size, but he is dogged right there by Machado. From Montrose Christian in Rockville, Maryland, played with Kevin Durant in high school. Pretty impressive. He's used to seeing basketball at the highest level. And that three was pretty impressive from, I don't know, right in between the NBA line and the international line. There's about a three-foot difference. It's 20 feet six inches here international and 23 feet nine inches is the three-point line in NBA play. A little easier to handle internationally. The NBA three-pointer, as you know, is a lot further away. He checked from Machado, not close. Rebound, J.P. Batista, and he puts it in. He was nice in their opening win against Canada. Now here's a guy who's got great lower body strength. You can see him using it right there on that plate. Carves out a lot of space for himself. Not a leaper, but when he gets the position on you, there's really not much a defender could do. Vasquez tried to thread the needle. Gives it to Bayona. He lost it. Barrios has to hoist from the elbow extended, and he knocks it down. Venezuela came to play all of the lobby. They're down 17-15. Absolutely. That was How is that not a turnover on Barbosa <laughs> with that high dribble? He gave it up anyway. Back comes Venezuela. Chance to tie or take the lead. Knocked out of bounds. Who's it off? It's off of Brazil. We'll keep it right here. 2.30 to go in the first quarter. That is Marcelinho Huertas into the game for Brazil. And Machado will stay in the game. We have two Marcelinos on the court at the same time. That's why we're here. We'll differentiate. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure out who's who and get be on it. Let you know who's getting what done here. We do have Fuertes and Machado in. I believe it's the first time all tournament long, as far as us covering the Brazilian game. Put to the test, we will be. We're up to the challenge. <laughs> hey, Serbia versus Lithuania, that is a challenge. <laughs> and Venezuela turns it over, 222 to go in the first. Wondering where the foul was there. Bayona looked like he got a little bit of the hip. Again, you remember you young kids out there watching, you gotta stay stationary. You cannot move when you're setting a pick. Too much of an advantage. The referee's gonna make an easy call there. Machado hit as he shot that one, and three free throw attempts coming from Marcelino Machado, who has stolen the thunder from our highlighted guy at the top of the broadcast, Leandrino <laughs> Barbosa. Barbosa with just three points, and Machado toes the line with six and counting. Absolutely. Here's a guy who's played all over the world, played in Lithuania, spent some time in Italy and Spain as well. A guy who's capable of knocking down threes. What I love about Machado is he's got a great head for the game. Very intelligent basketball player, makes a lot of good decisions out there. And when you play with guys like Barbosa, when you got Nene, the little intangibles that a guy like Machado can bring can make all the difference in the world. Six foot seven, 32 years old, good size for a perimeter player, obviously. Born in Rio de Janeiro. And at the FIBA Americas Championship 2005, averaged 23.4 PPG. Misses the last one, but the rebound comes out to the other Marcelino. Huertes back to Machado. Off the mark, tipped by Batista, saved Great and hustle. in to Barbosa. Can't keep giving Brazil second and third chance opportunities. You've got to make sure that you finish the defensive exchanges. Right now, you find Venezuela playing defense for an extended period of time. Grievous Vasquez had his hands all over Barbosa right there. There was no call. I know Leandro is frustrated about that. Here's a three over Grievous Vasquez. No dice, and the rebound. Comes to Venezuela. Back they come down four. Active Knocked out of bounds, and we'll keep it right here. Indeed, Barbosa not giving an inch. And into the game, Carlos Cedeno for Venezuela. He'll check in for Grievous Vasquez. We have a timeout on the floor with 1.36 to go in the first quarter. And surprising that Leandro Barbosa just three points here late in the first. He had 11 points in the first quarter in the first game against Canada. Why is he not getting off more? Well, I think one of the reasons is he's missing a lot of shots. He's taken quite a few shots earlier on when we covered him earlier in the tournament. He started off the game we played. We saw hot rolling from the beginning. Right now, it seems like he's struggling a little bit. Now, he's not the kind of guy that's going to taper off his shooting, though. He's not shy. He realizes that he's one of the main 
Cogs, very instrumental in this success of this Brazilian team. Yes, you have guys like Splitter on the inside who get it done, but it really does start and stop with a guy like Leandro Barbosa. Nestor Salazar wearing the jacket. A look we don't see frequently from the coaches here in this tournament. I would imagine that that jacket is going to be ripped off in the second half here, especially if Venezuela finds itself in the hole. I hope so. I hope Venezuela's in this game enough for that to be the case. I mean, Brazil, you look at their ranking in the FIBA World Rankings, and you wonder who's doing the rankings. They're 17th, and Venezuela's 21st. How are they four apart? Uh, that's a, not a big gap. I would imagine if you would have just asked me without us knowing, I would have said there would have been a bigger margin between those two teams. I find it hard to believe that there's only three teams in the world that you can put in between there. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how they formulate those seedings. So Venezuela back with it too. Mysterious rankings, and that is Barbosa, a mysterious beginning to this game for him. Another miss, and Venezuela coming back. Hector Romero, the big running the show, the miss. Down low, another opportunity. Oh, the bucket just wouldn't go for Luis Patelmi. Getting some good looks, just not getting the lucky bounces right now. I like the energy of Venezuela, though. They just have a different body language and a, and a different vibe about them than, it, than they did against the Americans when they showed up to lose that game. I, I, you're absolutely right. And they offered up no resistance against the United States team. Maybe great shot right there. How about Machado hitting again? His third three of the first quarter. And he has Brazil up 22-17. Here's a guy we talk about him. He's 32 years old. Rick, in 2007 Pan Am games about a month ago, averaged 15.2 points per game. So we know when he gets going, he's certainly capable of filling it up. Not just from long, long range, but from penetration and the mid-range jump shot as well. Great feed by Hector Romero into his teammate. And it brings Venezuela within three. 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. Brazil being very patient right now. Venezuela in a 2-3 zone. Trying to force Brazil into a perimeter shot, trying to take away all penetrations. We'll see what happens. Down to three in the shot clock. Machado had it. He should have just put it up himself. But at the buzzer of the shot clock, a bucket there by Guillermo Giovanni. And at the buzzer, Venezuela misses that long shot. So how do you like that? A buzzer beater from an unlikely source. Giovanni putting it in, coming in off the bench to give Brazil a lift as we head to quarter number two. They're rocking and rolling in Vegas. It is the FIBA Americas Championship 2007. The battle for South America thus far goes to Brazil. They lead by five as we head to quarter number two. As well, I'm trying to get them to limit them to one shot, one and done as we like to say, and make sure that we come down and become as efficient as we can on the defense and offensive end of the floor. You're down five right now. You've got to do it on both ends of the floor. Rick and Ala chilling in Vegas. Glad to have you with us around the world. Watching this great tournament, FIBA Americas Championship 2007. Shot clock running down, a bad shot, a bad possession to open up the second quarter for Venezuela. And just so you know, two automatic berths in the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games are at stake in this tournament. If you go to the gold medal game, doesn't matter if you win or lose, you are in the Olympics. And FIBA Europe, they're going to be holding their tournament called Eurobasket 2007 in a couple of weeks. And two berths will go to the Olympics from that tournament as well. China already in as the host country. Spain in from winning the world championship last year. Iran in and Australia in as well for winning their zone. So four of the 12 spots already secure. There's still eight spots open. And the ball out of bounds off of Machado. We'll keep it here. And for the teams that finish three, four, and five in this tournament, hope is not lost. You can still go to the Olympics if you do well in the prequal next summer, about six weeks before the Olympics begin. The trick is, even though you still have a lot of opportunities to make it into the Olympics, the, th the trick is you do not want to be playing in those qualifying tournaments right up until the opening games in the Olympics. Because what happens is you're exhausted. You spent a lot of emotional and physical energy leading up to the Olympics to Tank may be empty by the time you get to Beijing, China. Miguel Mariaga 
Venezuelan League Newcomer of the Year in 2005, 6 foot 10, 23 years old, banging down that baseline, Jay, bringing Venezuela within three. Folks, that's a 6 foot 10 forward center right there, being able to shoot facing up, good range. The game has changed, Rick. A lot of bigs now have the ability to face up. Oh, what a shot by Huertas. The other Marcelino making plays. Both of the Marcelinos letting their presence be felt here. Very impressive, both of them getting it done on both ends of the floor. Look at the aggressiveness digging right there. Almost the steal for Huertas. Carlos Cedeno down low to Luis Pithelmi. Barriaga, can he do it again? Wow. From exhilaration to an air ball. And uh, baseline, Jay. In and out and back in for Nene. And he had the full throw going in game one and the cornrows here in game two. It's all about being aerodynamic. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what he's going for. Mission accomplished. Nene puts Brazil up seven. It's a dangerous time for Venezuela. The whole game is dangerous for them. I mean, Brazil, a true world power, and Venezuela trying to become one in a shot clock violation. Nobody even looking at the rim, Allah. I think they're not even aware of the shot clock right now. You look at the Venezuelan coach. He cannot be pleased with the fact that guys out there, seems to me, Rick, aren't concentrating. Everybody's supposed to be aware of the shot clock. You almost have the shot clock going off in your subconscious. You know when it's coming down to an end. Right there, nobody on the Venezuelan team played with any sense of urgency whatsoever. Alex Garcia off of the shot. Good rebound. And Grievous Vasquez back for Venezuela. They got to get something going here. Skip pass into the corner. Got to watch out because Brazil's the kind of team that can score in bunches. Right now they're down seven Venezuela. You want to make sure that Brazil doesn't open it up. Nice defense by Vasquez to knock that out. And I, I cannot remember the last, well, I can. It was Mariaga with that baseline shot. But there have been a series of possessions in a row for Venezuela where they haven't gotten anything. And they're not getting good shots either. I think that's why it's leading to no production. A lot of fadeaways, a lot of shots that are coming with guys all draped all over them with a good defensive presence. I think they're not taking the smartest shots that are available to them, forcing the issue a little bit, Venezuela is. Romero underneath, back to the hoop, couldn't score, but he's picked up by his countryman, Miguel Mariaga, and he has Venezuela back down five. Venezuela is an entirely different team when they get out on the break. It seems like they lend themselves to their strengths, and their strengths are athleticism. You talk about how big some of these guys are, even though they're young. They're very athletic. They're playing to a lot of the, the things that they like to do best. But the half court set for them, here we see him again in transition. Off the glass, no good. And what a rebound by Nene. That was men against boys. And back comes the Brazilians. An offensive foul called on the hero of the end of the first quarter, Giovanni. He turns it over. And Venezuela, chance to cut a little closer to Brazil. Now down five. They got a stop, all. Well, they do. They did get a stop there. And again, Brazil has not, as of yet, been able to put the hammer into the coffin, if you will. Right now, Brazil letting Venezuela hang around. And I think when you let a team that is downtrodden or beaten, like we, like we saw them get beaten by, by the United States the other day, they're looking for an excuse to lay down, to kind of roll over. Right now, Brazil's giving him every reason to be confident and to hang in this game. Looking a lot like the game against Canada when we thought Brazil was going to break away from them. They really never did. They let Canada hang the whole the whole game. And Hector Romero there, the drive and draws the foul on the day. And after a fast start to the game, Romero started with seven quick points, nothing since, but now a chance to go to the line and add. Rick, we talked about how Nene lost about 40 pounds throughout the course of last NBA season. Has he found some of that weight back again, Rick? He looks a little heavier than he did come playoff time, or is it just me comparing him to some of the other guys out on the floor? Romero hits the first. Uh, I think you're being a little tough on, okay. on, on Nene. I, I, th I think he looks fine. I think he looks bright. He may not be in midseason right, NBA right. form, but uh, but I think he looks pretty good out here and looking good at the line. Hector Romero, despite a lane violation, they give him the free throw. That was a lane violation by Brazil, and Brazil holds with a three-point lead, 28-25. A little bit low scoring, but that's the way the first game for Brazil went. Absolutely, and Venezuela, three points down, still hanging in there. Right now, they're in a 1-2-2 zone, trying to trap in the corners there. Machado 
and Murillo just all he does is just kill you with those little plays. We talked about at the end of the first quarter, Brazil having the advantage on the offensive rebounding side. Well, they still continue to have it. Give them another opportunity there. Big three by Machado. His fourth of this first half for number four. And he has 14 points. The lead now six for Brazil. Totally different games. Machado was brutal in game one. One of nine. And he has turned that frown upside down. That was Murillo Becker with the denial, the no look from Machada and downloaded an A and he lays it in. What teamwork by Brazil. You gotta love a fast break when it doesn't even touch the floor. Absolutely, they're the best fast breaks. The ball can get up the floor much quicker than the player can, but you love the hands on the Nea as well. That was not an easy catch. In traffic with a man on his back, catches the ball and then finds the basket while in midair. Very athletic move there by the big fella. So Brazil by eight, 5.05 to go in the first half. Let's see if Venezuela can get themselves an all-important basket right here. Great move. Oh, nice up fake by Romero. Came in and was fouled by Murillo. And that's a sweet move on a very good NBA player, Nene, who was totally deeped out there by Hector Romero. It was a great pump fake. Set him up in a triple threat position. You have to respect the jump shot of Romero, which is what we talk about Nene doing right there. Puts the ball on the floor. It was a fantastic move as well. We're going to head to the commercial break here as we come back. We've got Brazil up on. Under five minutes to go in the first half from Vegas. Glad to have you with us. It's the FIBA America's Championship 2007. And Brazil on top, 33-25. Hector Romero. He was with the Blazers and the Vegas Summer League back in 2006 and played very well, prompting praise from now general manager of the Trail Blazers, Kevin Pritchard. He averaged eight plus points and five plus rebounds for the Blazers at that Summer League. And he hits the first free throw here. He's gonna find himself playing in Italy next year. A step up from some of the other places he's been. In other words, Venezuela, as good as their domestic league is, I think everybody would agree that Italy's a stronger league. He'll get better, get himself Hopefully a lot of playing time and come back play next year for this Venezuela team a much improved basketball player still young only 27 years old Kickball by Venezuela will Restart the shot clock for Brazil they in yellow Venezuela in red Rick and Allah on the call glad to have you with us Brazil by six. Oh, they tried the alley up. It went to Nene anyway, and he finger rolled it home. Nene with six. It got there somehow, and very impressive body control right there. Had to double clutch it a little bit. Still able to knock down the easy layup there, but made it look easy. Wasn't as easy as it looked there. Tough shot. Romero in traffic. He's going to go up anyway. Nice feed. Mariaga draws the foul underneath. And. Murillo, Becker, the guilty party. And a credit to Hector Romero. When he gets the ball now, Brazil is double and triple teaming him. The sign of, of things to come, possibly, with the fact that they're worried about the threat he poses inside. Little stare down. Nene directing his glare at Hector Romero on his way back up the court. But none of that matters now. What does is Miguel Mariaga at the strike, in and out. Been a member of the Venezuela national team since 2003. Speaking of Romero and Nene, I would imagine, Rick, that they're going to have a lot of opportunities to exchange pleasantries throughout the course of this evening. A lot of basketball left to play. Pleasantries? Well, that's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> I totally understand. Sarcasm in play from Ala Abdelnabi. And Brazil on top by seven. A risky pass right there. Romero almost with the steal. Oh, and the denial by Mariaga. Back to Becker underneath and he scores what a basket he was rejected stayed with it and scored that Murillo Becker that was a tough shot had to go underneath the basket jump around and find the rim all while in the air tough finish very athletic on that play you know in our earlier game in the Argentine victory 
Diego Logrippo is a guy who just mixes it up, and he's always in the middle of the fray and always making plays for his team. And I would say the exact same thing about Marillo Becker. It's not always good, it's not always pretty, but he makes things happen out there, and usually it's a good thing for Brazil. Here he sends Romero to the line. No, I agree with you. With the exception of this time here where he does wind up with the foul, he's active, he's got a strong body. What I like about Marillo, too, is he's only 24 years old, Rick. He's still learning the game. It's one thing to be playing in your domestic leagues. This young, this young fella played uh, in F France, France, Franca Basquet last year, um, and has played there since 2002. But a guy who's steadily improving. And what I like about him is he attacks. He's aggressive. He's learning trial by fire, as opposed to going out there and learning it by being an observer. They were trying to feed Marillo right there. Look at Nene, Shaq oh, style, nice setting everybody up. Oh, what a pass. Nene to Marillo, Becker for the deuce. Now they've got Marillo on Romero, took Nene off of him. Oh, wow. what a reverse from Hector Romero. I didn't know he had that game. Hector Romero looking good. We just mentioned those two players there. He beats Marillo, finds Nene, and with the reverse off the glass, Tough, tough shot. Very impressive. High degree of difficulty. Great athleticism as well. And a turnover in the backcourt. Brazil turns it back over to Venezuela. I'm, he's going to be a terror in the Italian league. Absolutely. He is going to be a handful for them to deal with over there. And this is Vasquez driving, going glass. A little strong. And speaking of strong, that rebound by Nene. And look at him handle the rock on him. Showing you the whole repertoire out there. Oh, that was going to oh. be a dunk for Nene. Tipped away by Venezuela. And they're back down eight. Active hands. Driving. Another denial at the rim. Do we have a foul? Keep in mind, Leandro Barbosa on the bench right now. Brazil up by eight. Offensive foul on Mariaga gives it back to Brazil. Here's another look at that move by Romero. That's Kobe ass, baby. That's improvisation right that there. That's really, really nice. It up as we go along. That is really nice, all. I mean, he's a big, beefy dude, and that's athleticism that you don't think you're going to get from a guy with his body. And you can practice all night in the gym. Some people have it, and some don't. Right there, Romero, Hector, showing us some of the stuff in his arsenal. Very impressive. Brazil no. by eight, and the good news for them, Barbosa back in the game, and the shot up and in. Mezinho Dos Santos puts Brazil up 11. Now, it automatically changes. As soon as Barbosa comes in, he gets a lot more attention than the rest of the perimeter players. Finds Mezinho wide open there. Had all the time in the world to shoot that three point. And Venezuela's going to make a charge here towards the end of the half. They're in an 11 point hole, and a big, big shot from the corner right there by Kevin Palacios. Romero doing it all. If he's not scoring, he's finding people. Great find right there in the corner. Palacios with a long range three. Nene draws the double. Move it around. Mazzino in and out. And the rebound by Romero. Great box out on Murillo. Absolutely. Textbook box out right there. Got his body on him. Went up with two hands to get the rebound. No push off, I thought. Good call. And that foul drawn by Nazinho, who we did not see a lot of. That man right there in the win over Canada, getting some run here, and all he's done is make plays. Nestor Salazar bombing end of the half. It's Venezuelans down eight. Leading scores in this basketball game, Marcelino Machado leading Brazil with 14, and Hector Romero leading Venezuela with 14. That is Nene who had his name legally changed back in the summer of 2003 from Mayfiner Rodney Hilario to Justin A. And as a guy who, like who likes efficiency, I'm, I'm not mad at him. It's a lot easier to say Nene. Well, with a name like Abdul Nabi, just saves a lot of time and ink for writing Nene. Only four letters. I could appreciate a short name like that. Rick Campbell alongside Double A <laughs> here in Vegas. Brazil and Venezuela. Balling for you and yours. Hope you're enjoying it. Under 10 in the shot clock and the rebound taken right there by D'Souza. D'Souza thought about that shot in a little bit. Tried to get it to Hilario and another loose ball oh, pulled out by Becker. And no, Nene was looking to just bring down the house with that jam. 
and he's upset that he wasn't able to flush it down, but he will go to the line for a pair of free throws. Nene, six points in this game. Good interior passing right here, you'll see. That's what you're supposed to do as well. When you're going to pass from big to big in the lane, the bounce pass is the best way to go. That was a missed dunk, Ola. That yes, wasn't it was. even really much of a foul on there. No, it wasn't much of a foul, but he got bailed out for going strong. Referees sometimes reward effort. Ooh. That not the stroke we're used to seeing from Nene. Five years with the Denver Nuggets. He's averaged 11 points and 6.4 rebounds and hasn't always gotten a lot of playing time so he's a very efficient guy very productive with the minutes that he gets and we talked about george carl a little bit earlier on uh, in the tournament when he mentioned how they handle their matchups on the defensive end you've got the defensive player of the year marcus canby who gets to roam nene covers the best big score so that talks it speaks volumes about this guy's progression Maybe not, the, we wouldn't put him in that position when he first came to the league, but look at the progress he's steadily made throughout his time in the NBA. I think he's a stud, there's no doubt about it. And the Denver Nuggets very happy to have him. He's got a big, fat contract, a long-term deal, and it's been all good for Denver. Boy, did they take a risk, signing him to that trade as he was rehabbing an injury. And there's Nene turning it over. Trying to do a little too much there, I think. Venezuela back. Another risky pass there. Brazil's defense is definitely tightened up. But down low, Bayona with the miss, knocked away to Brazil. Brazil collecting to walk the ball up the floor. They've got a comfortable nine-point lead as we hit it to the last half minute of the first half. Barbosa has been ultra quiet, and he passes off to D'Souza. Can't find the mark. Back comes Venezuela. Dare I say this is a must-score possession for them. They want to get this inside single digits. You want to go in the locker room feeling good about yourself. That too. And they're not going to be feeling too good about what's going on here unless a miracle occurs. And almost, that was Carlos Cedeno fortunately got it back from the Venezuelan perspective, went up and got fouled with four seconds left. And he just, what he did was he never gave up on the play. He saw that there was a loose ball there. Sometimes people think that's luck, but I think you make your own luck, and his hustle allowed him an opportunity to take advantage of what happens out there on the floor, and what happened was the ball bounced right to him. So Daniel rattles in the first. His nickname is Margarito, and he was drafted by the Bakersfield Jam of the D-League in 2006, but Ala failed to make the team. And you know, sometimes you get to a certain place, if it's a new environment for you, you've got a lot of expectations, and unfortunately, times you don't live up to it. You've got one second left. Nene, was he fouled before the zeros were on the clock? That is the question right there. I think they're going to allow that play and put Nene at the free throw line. And I'm not disagreeing with the officials, but I don't know. This was very close. See if we can see a red light on the other end there. I'm telling you, he was fouled. It's, it's, it's .5, I think, was on the clock right there. I think the referees got that right. It was very, very close and very fortuitous for Brazil. Well, maybe fortuitous <laughs> here at the stripe with uh, zeros on the clock here at the end of the second quarter. And they trying to give them an eight-point lead as they head into the locker room. And Nene looking for his eighth point. Oh, can't get it. So Nene with a pair of misses from the stripe. And Venezuela very, very happy about that. They're still hanging around, people. The Venezuelans have came to play in this game. They're 0-2. This is a death game for them. If they go to 0-3, they can forget about this tournament. They can forget about the Olympics. And we will see fire, I'm sure, from them in the second half. Brazil has been led by Marcelinho Machado. He with 14, Leandrino Barbosa with just three. The halftime coverage coming up next. Two points, two fouls in that first half. Tiago, I'm being facetious. <laughs> Rick Kamla, Allah Abdel Nabi on the call. Glad to have you with us here for the second half. And Allah, as, as I just surmise what's going on in this game, it feels like early in the third is a very critical time for Venezuela to prove to all of us, including the Brazilians, that they're here to play a game. Because if Brazil gets off to a hot start, this game might be over. Yeah, I agree with you. And they're going to have to prove it to themselves as well. We always talk about the first five minutes of every half being important. Right now, after talking it over in the locker room, Venezuela really has to put their best foot forward here to get back into this ballgame. 
Long shot to start the second half is good. Baltillo Silva That's the Brazil a 10-point lead. Excuse me, Rick. Not the way, if you're Venezuela, that you want to start out the second half by giving up a three-point shot. And again, Brazil going to unlikely sources for their points. Romero, nice pass into a cutting. Teammate couldn't get the layup, and that is negative for Venezuela. Back comes Brazil. Barbosa, runner. No, another miss for him, and Mariaga pulls down the rebound. Barbosa just can't seem to find his rhythm thus far in the game. Does so much more for his team than just score, as evidenced by the 10-point lead Brazil has without him really contributing that much from the scoring end. Good rebound by Jose Vargas. Has not gotten much playing time. Nestor Salazar has had an interesting rotation in this game. I'm not being critical or ripping him, I'm just saying. It has not been the same rotation as the first game, and that shot off the mark by Alejandro Barrios, and nice feed Barbosa to Becker. Now, if you're Venezuela, I don't know if you call a timeout right now, but coach of the Venezuelan team at least has to entertain the thought. Looks like, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, the game might be getting away from him. Oh. Romero, another drive. Oh, it was pinned by Tiago Splitter. Romero gets it back, and Splitter knocked it off the rim. Good effort by Romero, nothing to show for. Back comes Brazil, Barbosa. Out to Silva, his finger roll won't go. And maybe that's why they showed Splitter at the top of the third quarter. The block, he got the offensive rebound, drew another foul right there. Splitter and Brazil came to play here in the third. A sign of things to come. Perhaps the cameraman knew a little bit more than we did, but Tiago is coming to play in the second half here. And let's face it, they've done a lot of good things without him. But imagine if him and Barbosa get clicking as well. This game will be over real soon. Venezuela's going to have to guard against that. Off the mark from Splitter. It was a total team effort for Brazil in their opening win over Canada. And they're getting contributions from a lot of sources here in this game against Venezuela. They're looking good up 12. Splitter not looking good on those free throw attempts, however. Shot them like he was tired. Both of them were short. Don't know if fatigue is setting in. It's still early in the third quarter, but... He barely played in the first <laughs> half. Come no on. reason to be tired, huh? Mary, I got sweet runner in the lane. It's back to 10. Tough shot right there by the young fella. Again, Mariaga's a guy who has got a, a lot of future ahead of him. Only 23 years old, Rick. Six foot ten, good size. Here he comes. Leandrino Barbosa just hit a three. Doubled up his points from the first half. And the lead is 51-38 for Brazil. Tough to keep a good man down, Leandro Barbosa will tell you. Plenty of basketball left to play. A lot of room yet for him to leave his mark on this game. Mariaga is badly from the baseline. Silva back, nice feed, splitter filling and scoring, and the lead has swelled to 15 for Brazil. Now, you couldn't draw it up any better than that. Lanes were filled. The penetration gets to the middle of the lane, makes the first defender decide what to do, makes the great read and finds Thiago Splitter filling the lane. Romero got the roll, and Splitter almost knocked that one away. And Romero now with 16 points, he leads everybody. We talked about him at the top of the game, him being the best player on this team, having to bring it. He's brung it thus far. Oh, nice shot by Murillo Becker. Nice move right there. Going one way, steps up and pulls real quick with the nice one-handed off the glass. Not an easy shot in traffic. He's a sneaky, sleepy player. I mean, you don't really think about him. You know, you've got the big three of Barbosa and Splitter and Nene. And that guy right there, Marillo Becker, just makes plays. Very energetic guy. Picks up his third foul right there, so he's going to have to play with a little bit more vigilance, but very solid player for Brazil. And when you think about Murillo, we talked about Thiago Splitter being 22 years old. Murillo's 24. When you add him to Varejan and Nene, this is a front line with these four guys that's going to be playing for the Brazilian national team for a lot of years to come. And for those who may not know why Anderson Varejan of the Cleveland Cavaliers is not here with Brazil, he's healthy enough to be here, but... He's a restricted free agent, and he and the Cavaliers have not come to terms yet, so he doesn't want to risk getting an injury. Silva just lost the dribble right there, a break for Venezuela. They're back down 15. Vasquez had it knocked away, and then 
Vargas got it back, went up, and he was fouled. Got a guard against having a letdown right now. It doesn't seem like Venezuela is giving up. They've got to make sure that they get some stops on one end of the floor and then convert down the other end. Right now, things aren't going their way. Well, there was a letdown for Brazil against Canada. They had Canada dead to rights, and they exhaled a little bit. Let yep. Canada get back in it, and Canada tied that game about midway through the fourth quarter. And then you had Splitter go out with fouls. Then you had Nene go out with fouls, and you're thinking, hmm, Canada may shock. Canada may shock them here, but Brazil actually played better after their bigs fouled out. They did, and it was interesting because then they got to play a, per a perimeter-oriented kind of game, put a lot of perimeter guys in there, and just pass the ball around. Really kind of abandoned the inside play, but it worked for him against Canada. Great ball movement right here. Hector Romero with a very harsh foul on Tiago Splitter. Good sportsmanship. Says, my bad. Hope it didn't hurt. With a wink. Actually, I think he hopes it did hurt just a little bit. <laughs> Enough to miss the free throws at least. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you don't want to hurt see, the guy. That was the bear hug slash meat cleave. And Romero looking right at him saying, hey, man, just playing ball. And the adventure continues. <laughs> yeah, I remember him for some reason. There's a, another fan in the stands not liking the results, wanting Tiago to convert the free throws. Somebody needs to tell her they're up 14. <laughs> Easy does it. I don't remember him being this poor of a free throw shooter. I remember him having a little bit better touch than this, but he's struggling from the line tonight. Hey, we saw Carlos Arroyo miss back-to-back -back free throws in our earlier game. Anything is possible in Vegas. Romero for three, not close. Rebound, Brazil. Back they come up 15. Machado. Oh, he got it and one. What a bucket by Marcelinho Machado. Very impressive, and what I liked about it, too, is it was the secondary break. Brazil's bigs run all the way to the basket. You can see Murillo and the splitter there. Leaves the lane wide open for Machado. Beats his man, gets to the bucket, converts the play. The bucket, I should say, looking to convert the three-point play. Machado's first points of the second half, 14 at the half. And I know, I remember as a player, Rick, the best thing you could have happen to you if you're a player who had a good first half is to get going early in the second half. Have the whole night carry off for you. It's going so far for Machado. We'll be back right after this. We've got Brazil down, up, I should say, over Venezuela. We'll be back right after this. Third quarter, and Marcelinho Machado bringing a smile to the faces of his fans here in Las Vegas. And they say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, not when you're on national TV or worldwide television. Marcelinho, everybody knows that tonight you are the man. Started off the game strong, still playing top-notch basketball right now, really getting his whole complete repertoire going. Driving, shooting, doing it all right now, Rick. Kevin Palacios right there with a strong drive, bounding off of Brazilian bodies, and it's out of bounds, back to Brazil. And we mentioned at the top that the start of the third was going to be critical for Venezuela. They did not answer the bell, and Brazil has, and that's why the lead has gone from seven at the half all the way up now to 18, and it looks very, very bleak for Venezuela, not only for this game, but for this tournament and their hopes to make the Olympics for the first time since 1992 as Tiago Splitter hammers it down two-handed. And it just looks like the resistance that Venezuela is offering up may be dwindling a little bit, Rick, right now, and that may have a lot to do with the fact that their confidence is waning a little bit, but let's give credit where credit's due. Brazil having a lot to say about what happens here on the court tonight. Great pass to Splitter right there, and that's the emphatic finish that the Brazilians are looking for. Brazil's a fantastic team, there's no doubt about it. Even without Verajao, Machado going for the steal out of bounds. It'll go back to Venezuela with 10 seconds on the shot clock. But, you know, I don't know where they stack up. The FIBA World Rankings, um, they're a guideline, all right? Let, let's just say that. In, in Brazil, at 17, there are not 16 better teams in the world than this Brazilian national team. And I, the, the, the rankings will definitely be adjusted after this tournament as Grievous Vasquez goes up and scores for Venezuela. But, you know, Brazil, I don't know if it's likely that they go to the Olympics, but they're definitely a contender to go to Beijing next year. Absolutely, and if not the second best team in South America, uh, third, but they've got to be right behind Argentina, I would imagine, as being the second best team in the Southern... 
part of the uh, continent of America. And at the same time, they've got a lot of team presence. And that's what I like about them is not one guy is their go-to guy. Starting off the game, we talk about Leandro Barbosa. He's their main guy. Well, Rick, he hasn't really done that much tonight. But it's a lot of other guys. That guy right there, Machado, among others, who've stepped up. He gets a second look at it. Come on, you can't leave him that wide open. All he's doing is crushing threes the whole game. And Machado does it to them again. He now has 20 points in this game. We're going to find out a lot about the character of Venezuela right now. Are they going to offer up a fight? Or are they just going to go with the flow, take what comes, and go away with the loss here? Romero may have something to say about that. Well, he's a bull in a china shop right now. And drawing a foul, and he'll go to the line. And Well, he answered... Your call right there, showing some aggression. And you can't really compare this game against the Brazilians to their 112-69 loss to the Americans. But in a way, you can. If there was no resistance whatsoever in that game against the Americans, and yes, I know they're not going to win that game, but I mean, they, they rolled over and played dead for 40 minutes in that basketball game. And you know, it'd be nice if, if they came with fire here in this third quarter and in the second half but other than a couple of glimpses we really haven't seen it and like we said this is virtually a death game for this team i couldn't agree with you more and my former coach at duke coach k the usa coach now would tell you that the next two hours that we're playing is the most important regardless of who the opponent is what's more important than what we're doing and you saw venezuela really not respond long distance three right there he get his foot on the line. Did he? He might have. They gave him a two he on a two. that. And now eight points in the game for Leandrino. Look at the hustle. Marcelino up the ahead. And the unselfishness. Oh, I thought that was going to be a jam by a Splitter. Laid it over the rim. And the lead is bulbous right now for Brazil. The blowout is on. 68-45 Brazilians over Venezuelans. Look at what Brazil's picking up, though, Rick. There's no let up in their game. They're picking up at the top of the key. Still competing, Brazil is. Bodies all over the floor. You got to love that. There are three teams with two wins in this tournament already. USA 2-0, Argentina 2-0, Canada at 2-1. And Brazil looks like they're going to go to 2-0 and oh as well. And well-earned, well-deserved win. Game's not over yet, though. I've seen, we've both seen crazier things happen, but... I haven't. <laughs> You've never seen a team come back from 23 points. I have, but not this team <laughs> against that team. Agreed. If you know what I'm saying. Agreed. Becker picks up his fourth foul. And if the game were tighter, that'd be bad news for Brazil. Hector Romero at the stripe. You know you're having a good day when you go to the bench and your buddies have just got <laughs> nothing but jokes for you. Smile from ear to ear, splitters getting, getting in on the jokes as well. I would imagine that their night is over unless Venezuela could come back with one heck of a comeback. We'll find out. They don't need one heck of a comeback. They need a miracle at yeah, this yeah. point. They're down 22, 247 to go in the third. Checking into the game, Axer Sucre for Venezuela. Start to put some fresh bodies in there. Romero having a seat next to his coach, Coach Salazar. I like I like Hector Romero though. He's made a good impression on me. I can tell you that. Absolutely. Here's Barbosa, and still not into double figures. Machado and oh. Murillo into doubles for Brazil, and that is it. And underneath Nene with the rebound, Brazil still wants to pour it on. So if, you're, if you're not, sorry, all, but if you're not familiar with the geography with these two teams, I mean, Brazil on the right side of South America, Venezuela right at the top, almost Central America, right at the northern tip of South America. And underneath, that is Sucre putting it in, passed by Vargas. Venezuela's capital is Caracas, one of my favorite words to say. One of my favorite words to say is Abdel Nabi, and I've gotten it down. <laughs> you say it a lot after, better than I do. <laughs> after, after working with you for almost a couple of years, it's rolling off the tongue, Allah. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, a, it's been an absolute delight and a pleasure, and we're having a lot of fun doing these games here at the FIBA Championship of the Americas in full display. And it's just getting started, Allah. This is just day three. 
Houston. And a baseline J right there. How about that? Axair Sucre comes in and back-to-back -back buckets. Very impressive. There's a guy, again, making the most of his opportunity right now. He realizes that maybe the game is out of reach, but a lot of work can still be done. You're trying to impress your coaches. And not only that, Rick, work on your own individual game. Machado, sweet feed to Nene, but he pinned himself on the rim as he was being fouled. Not as much lift right there from Nene as we're used to seeing. The elevator doesn't go to the penthouse, does it? <laughs> well, it, it does frequently, just not that time. Stuck in cement was Nene. Watch the Otis this. is stuck. I mean, he did have guys climbing all over. That was Alejandro Barrios fouling him from behind. And we're going to look at Nene at the free throw line. Born in Sao Carlos, Brazil. Taken seventh overall by the Nuggets back in 2002. And missed every game but one in the 05-06 season with that torn ACL. Come on. An ACL in game one? You go through the whole offseason, you go through training camp, you want to play, and then you're out the whole year because you get hurt in game one? Does it get any worse than that? It really doesn't. And if I we take it a little bit further, delve into this situation a little bit more, I believe it was the third minute that he was out there on the floor. So to only get three minutes of NBA time and then have to sit the entire year out, that really does test one's fortitude one's devotion to the game but man has he bounced back nicely and the better for it as well he's leaner and you know what sometimes when you go through a difficult time like that a lot of us can attest to it it makes you a better player a tougher player and certainly i think the is a perfect example of that and splash from the corner venezuela making a surge here towards the end of the third it's down to 14 under 10 seconds to go in the quarter, here's Nazinho down to five. Kick out to Barbosa with three seconds left. The air ball is rebounded by Sucre. That shot is up and in. Does it count? Yes, it does. And for the second time in this game, Giovanni ends a quarter with a buzzer beater. That's how he ended quarter number one. And the third quarter ends with a buzzer beater by Giovanni as well. Another look, Ala. See Barbosa with the pass. The shot, I should say, looked like a pass. <laughs> and then. I don't know. Look, I thought I saw a red light there I don't with know. the ball in his hands. That was extremely close. Giovanni giving credit for the bucket. Another buzzer beater. And Brazil has been in effect through three quarters. Nene, Barbosa, Splitter, and company getting it done. What about Machado? Marcelinho getting it done. Earlier, 12 to 7, the advantage to Brazil. And the assist, 19 to 10, an advantage of Brazil as well, tells you that they're being efficient, moving the ball, getting the best possible shot, time in and time, time in and time down. I should say every time down the floor. Excuse me there, getting a little tongue tied. Brazil has not let up on this gas at all here, Rick. They're up 16, but every chance they get to change ends, they're doing it at a high, high rate of speed. Well, when Leandro Barbosa is involved, it's the speed of sound uh, <laughs> based on... Calling the Brazilian blur, I love it. That's very apropos. I didn't come up with that, although I don't, I don't think I came up with that. I think somebody, I think I came up with that along with somebody else simultaneously. I don't know who gets credit for it. It doesn't matter. Barbosa gets all the credit. Rick Campbell, Ala Abdelabi on the call. Glad to have you with us here from Vegas. The FIBA America's Championship 2007. Featuring right now, Brazil and Venezuela. Glad to have you with us. Nazinho with the takeaway. He's ahead for Brazil, and he is fouled from behind. And is there an additional foul or penalty tacked on to just that foul? And they not happy about that exchange. I really didn't see much there. It looked like guys got their feet caught up. Just looked like a simple trip right there. Referee made the right call, but I don't think there was any malicious, malicious intent whatsoever. Let's take another look at it. Let's keep an eye on the feet. There was a little shove. Maybe a little bit of a shove. Not much. A little bit of a shove, and that was exactly what Nene had a problem with. That was not the most sportsmanlike possession for the Venezuelans, and I'm sure they'd like to have that back. And Nene just coming in to make sure his teammates are all right. With such a big margin right here, you don't want anybody to come up with a cheap injury or an un untimely injury, if you will. So Nene just coming in and laying down the law of the land. And they did call a technical foul on Venezuela, so two shots and the ball for Brazil. And Nazinho, who has not played much, but 
He's making things happen out there. Hits both free throws. The lead is back up to 18 for Brazil. And they get the ball out of bounds, so an opportunity here to really open up the lead. Venezuela sitting back in a man to man. Barbosa try to feed it into Nene. Kick by Venezuela. A new shot clock with 9.06 to go in this fourth quarter. I love the cross screen. Barbosa going to get Nene. Really sets up a whole bunch of mismatch situations there. If you're Brazil, they tried to make the read and go into Nene, seeing that he had a small guy on him after the switch with Barbosa. Unable to finish off the play. And Garcia fouled on his way to the hoop. Look at Hector Romero leading this Venezuelan team with 17 points. Mariaga right behind, well, not right behind him, but behind him with nine, and that was foul number three on Romero. Zinho will inbound for Brazil. Does so to Garcia, and they find Barbosa for three. Leandro Barbosa, fifth in threes with 190 during the NBA season, and he shot 43% from beyond the arc. That's 23-9. This is 26, and Barbosa now into doubles. He has 11. Out of bounds, Nazinho over there overplaying, knocked it out, but Venezuela will keep possession. And you gotta love the fact that it's a sustained effort from Nazinho. He has not given up, he has not relaxed one bit. Human nature with such a big lead. Tendency, you mentioned earlier, to exhale, to relax. That is not the case with Brazil, especially their perimeter players. Everybody up in your face. Lula Ferreira and his team pedal to the metal. Oh, and a sweet shot over the defense right there by Grievous Vasquez. Teardrop there. Barbosa eating up Leandrino for three again. It's tough to keep him down for an entire evening. You could hope to have him have maybe a bad period or two, but eventually the cream always rises to the top, and Leandro Barbosa getting himself involved in the mix. Vasquez working against a double team and an offensive foul. Mazzino again. Putting his body out there on the line. And one of the officials just told Grievous to watch it and cool it because he kind of did the Rashid Wallace pump the arm thing because he did not like the call. And a lot of times that's enough to get a technical foul. They let it slide that time. Yeah, I'm not sure that that was a charge. But again, a little bit of the uh, acting perhaps. But either way, uh, got the best of it right there. Nazino did. Tough take for Alex Garcia. He thought he was fouled. Back comes Venezuela. Sucre off to Hector Romero between his legs. Out to Barrios. He will drive. Out of bounds. Off of who? And they said it was off of Giovanni. And he's a Brazilian, but looked like an Italian right there. <laughs> with the with, hands. With the hands, right? <laughs> I mean, he looked like... Many of the great Italian players, I mean, the, the you know, the, the elbows the in, gesture, the hands out. Absolutely. That is the international <laughs> gesture for who, me? <laughs> wow, Kamala and Ali in stereo right there. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> Barbosa fouled at half court. And a good one right there by Barrios because that was going to be more pointage for Brazil. Brazil is not taking their foot off the gas. If anything, Rick, they're still in the left lane passing people. Let's face it, Brazil only knows one way to play, and that's all out. Both ends of the floor. I've been very impressed with the way their guys have played, especially here in the second half with such a big lead. Barbosa, three points at the half, and he's on his way to 20 once again. He had 30 in the opener against Canada. He is the leading scorer in this tournament. And Barbosa. Trying to get Brazil back to the Olympics. They did not qualify in 2000 or 2004. If he winds up with 20, it'll be the quietest 20 points of this tournament. Brazil still trapping, still pressing full court. You gotta love that. Sucra hits again. Get this guy some more time. Axel Sucra, I mean, he is 
He's lighting it up ever since coming into the game. I don't think he saw the floor in the first half. He did. He did. That was just going to be my comment. He did not play in the first half. You would imagine maybe get a little stiff out there, but coach probably told him at halftime, get out there and warm up. You're playing. And he was up to the challenge. Has been thus far. Barbosa was left wide open. And Venezuela at his mercy right there. And a mercy full attempt by Barbosa. 80-59, Brazil over Venezuela. Vasquez, Sucre. Back to Vasquez, oh. tipped and stolen oh. by Nene. What an athletic play to steal and save, and the foul on Venezuela. I mean, Nene is 6'11". Pushing 270. 270, 260, and making that kind of play. That was impressive. Watch this, folks. Tiptoeing, knowing where his teammates are, that's top notch right there. And Giovanni, lucky that he has from his right elbow down uh, because that was a chop chop if ever I've seen it right there. And he hits the first free throw. Giovanni, clearly a tough guy. Taking knocks all night long. How about dual buzzer beaters for this guy? End of first, end of third. Quite a night for him. And Nene trying to follow flush over the entire country of Venezuela. Hugo Chavez may have something to say about that. <laughs> Giovanni will have a seat. Brazil on top by 22. Again, check my math. It, it's getting to the point where, where I need <laughs> I believe to that's calculate 22. to compute. <laughs> 22 and counting right now. Brazil has, for the most part, taken their main guys out. Janae's is still out there because he, as we oh, pointed out earlier, great block. Yeah, but Thelmy had menace in mind, and he was turned away. Romero. My point earlier was Brazil has their second team out there. Venezuela still with their first. Still trying to cut into this lead. Oh, the dunk, and that was easy. That was Marquinhos de Souza. Here's Hector Romero slamming into Alex Garcia, who's guilty of the foul. Now on that last play there on the dunk, there's just absolutely no reason why Venezuela should get beat back. They're not pressing. They're not trapping and double teaming. You just see right there a lack of hustle. Brazil just beat them down the floor. And you look at Marquinhos there, credit goes to him for getting out there and still playing hard-nosed basketball. Vasquez. Oh, he banked it in. I don't think he called it. And I know the banks aren't open in Vegas this late. <laughs> I know that. All. Right out of my mouth. Maybe the ATM. Maybe the ATM. <laughs> Not the bank. But Grievous Vasquez will get credit for the tray. Nevertheless, under six minutes to go in the game. And Alex Garcia knifing, slicing, and scoring. I know. One man that's not going to be able to get Venezuela back into this boat. I don't like is the collective acceptance of their fate. Someone has to offer up some resistance. None thus far. You know Nestor Salazar, as competitive as he is, not happy with what he's seeing. I mean, this is a mismatch in terms of talent. There's no doubt about that, but this is the FIBA America's Championship. I mean, this is when you want to bring it. This is when you want to lay it all on the line. And we've seen it at times from Venezuela, but we have not seen the sustained effort. Well, there may be a difference in talent. There may be a different difference in uh, overall achievements from team to team. But what shouldn't be different, in my opinion, is effort. The effort should be all out by everybody, regardless of your standing in the game or in the world rankings you should be bringing it there's a lot at stake here for each respective team venezuela on their way to an 0-3 record brazil on their way to a 2-0 record as these te two teams battle in group b and that is the group in which the americans reside in this fiba america's championship brazil by 21 timeout mike d'antoni Robert Sarver and the entire Phoenix Suns nation, Leandrino Barbosa is done for the day. And 15 points for him, 20 for Marcelino Machado. They lead Brazil in scoring, and Brazil 
leads Venezuela 85-64, under five and a half to go in this basketball game. Let's face it, even when he's not scoring, Barbosa is one of these guys that just gives you a calming presence out there on the floor. Brazil feels a lot better with him out there, and they play subsequently a lot better as well. Tiago split it with the left there. Why is he in the game? I was just going to comment on that. I'm wondering with 21 up, why Coach Lula would put in one of his starters, a big starter as well. Hey, forget big, any starter right now really shouldn't be out there on the floor. I'd understand Venezuela. Venezuela, you've got to fight through these tough tough times in a game, and you got to work on pride and collective pride as a unit, and that's why these guys are out there. But Brazil, I think you're just tempting fate right here. Back they come, D'Souza. Oh, the no-look save by Hector Romero, and it's Grievous Vasquez trying for the and one. Draws the foul on Alex Garcia. You know, Rick, you've, you and I have watched a lot of games over the years. When we see different players, we can tell when a player has presence, when he looks like he's at home out there on the basketball floor, no matter who he's going up against. And in my opinion, Hector Romero has that in spades. Very impressed with the way he's come out. Let's face it, at times, it's been one on two or three, and he has not shied away or backed down all night. I've been very impressed with his play thus far. I have too. He's got range. He's got a nice bot. He can get in there and mix it up. Uh, we saw an unbelievable baseline drive for a, for a reverse layup as Alex Garcia misses and Hector Romero down there going for the rebound. There he is on, on the base. I mean, you can see his physique. The guy is built to last. I mean, is he a superstar? No. Is he a solid basketball player? Of course. And uh, the Italian League better look out. Hector Romero is coming to town next season. What I love about him and what I've gotten it really my best opportunity to see his game. He plays with passion, Rick. Let's face it, and that is the biggest intangible any player could have. You gotta have love for the game, and you gotta have that competitive fire, and I've been very impressed with Hector Romero. Thiago Splitter, that's not bedhead. Bedhead is when it's like, like, you know, going down halfway and it's up the other way. It's just, you know, it's just the messy look, I guess. I don't know, I, I basically shaved my off. I can't up? relate. Is that product in his hair I, right there for a basketball game? Hair care products by Tiago Splitter, huh? It's working for him, though. Is it? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> 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 Tiago, we apologize. I just wish I had that much hair to actually do something with. It's a 20-point game, isn't it? <laughs> it is. We're looking for things. 4.15 to go. Tiago Splitter still in there. He's probably wondering, like us, uh, Lula, Ferrara, what did I do to receive this punishment to be in here late in a 20-point game? Ooh, almost a steal right there. I think what Lula's thinking about. Oh, the runner nice is good. Sweet move to the hoop by Hernan Salcedo. Tough move right there. He's just thinking Splitter's 22 years old. Let's have him out there gain some experience. But he's not your average 22-year-old. Here's a guy we talked about, played for Tau Ceramica, gets a lot of minutes, played for Brazil on the national team for a number of years now. Maybe that's why he left him in, to knock down a three. Are you kidding me? He just knocked down a three. This game just keeps getting weirder. <laughs> I think that's the first three of his life. I think that's the first three I've ever seen him not only make, but shoot. I agree. I, it's been all around the basket yep. and in the paint. Yep. In my uh, career watching Tiago Splitter, and that three is answered by Venezuela. And Tiago Splitter, the last four years with Tau Ceramica, and it's going to be at least one more. The buyout, Allah, is just too prohibitive this year. And let's face it, the Spurs don't need him anyway. No, and the thing about it is they can afford to bring him along slowly. Being 22 years old, that is what an age of a college graduate would be. So he still has 10, 12 years ahead of him. If you're San Antonio, you bring him along slowly. And if you add to the fact that he probably won't play a lot this year, Rick, why not go somewhere and maximize his minutes and make sure he gets a lot of playing time? Good decision. And like you said, the money has a lot to do with it as well. Nice drive by D'Souza. And with Luis Scola leaving Tau Ceramica to go to the Houston Rockets, 
Tiago Splitter is going to have to be a 2010 guy yep. this year yep. instead of 11 and 5 or 6 and just sort of a complimentary guy. Splitter's got to be the man on that Tau Ceramic Him team. and Paolo Brioni, yeah, they're both going to have to step up, but inside, as opposed to having to turn to Luis Scola, now they're going to have to turn to Tiago, and it's going to be interesting to see how he handles that dynamic. One thing to be a sidekick, it's another thing to be the lead guy, see if he can step up and assume the responsibilities. Well, you know Pop and R.C. Buford and the guys in charge of the San Antonio Spurs love that scenario. Let's see what Splitter can do with the spotlight pointed directly at him. He's going to get double teamed. He's going to get the focus of attention from an opposing team's defense. That's a different dynamic that players have to go through in their development to get better. And you can only see it by being out on the floor. I think it's a great move by the San Antonio Spurs to put him in a scenario where now he is the man at Tau Ceramica. Hector Romero. Speaking of men, he continues to play like one. And I like the clap after the dunk. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. I'm also a big fan of the swing through. Ah, little icing on the cake. And that's not so bad at the end of a blog here in Vegas. Brazil by 20. Under two minutes to go, Brazil by 20. The only suspense left in this broadcast is, do the Brazilians reach 100? Uh, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me because they haven't really let up. They've been going full bore throughout the whole course of this game. So a lot of time left to get eight points. They're gonna shoot for it too. Mazzino brings them five points away from 100. Rick Campbell, Ala Abdelabi on the call. Glad to have you with us. We're in Vegas, checking out the FIBA Americas Championship 2007. Brazil is still picking up full court, getting in your face, not allowing any easy looks. Very impressive If you're going to go, go hard. And that's what Kevin Palacios did right there. Nice touch in the paint. Brings Venezuela within 21. Marcelinho Huertas. Off to Alex Garcia. Thought he was going to get a foul call there. Nothing. Oh, was that sweet. The dribble move, the reverse layup from Alex Garcia. NBA experience with the Spurs and Hornets showing you why. And he's got the nice body to withstand the hit. Brazil still being active. Garcia with the steal. Here's that 100 you were looking for, perhaps. Well, he's going to have a chance to get them to 99 and then some. They will get free throws and the ball. That was called an intentional foul on Kevin Palacios. And Alex Garcia, as you can see, solidly built, but he paid for that one. Absolutely. And you know what? You should pay for it. Nothing easy. That was fine. That was a play on the ball. Absolutely. I thought that was a legit play. Didn't really see where the intentional foul was, but maybe a referee saw something from a different angle, trailing perhaps. I think a lot of times it's the result of the play that draws that intentional rather than what actually happened. And when you see Garcia splattered on the baseline, you you, you grab the wrist and it's an intentional foul and now Brazil's two points away and from it, 100. And it looks so much more grievous than it really is when someone does go sprawling out on the floor, but sometimes uh, the acting on afterwards, Grievous Vasquez, uh, the foul on him, I thought was a solid foul. I didn't think it was uh, too much of, of, of physical play, but referee saw it a different way. So it's now 99-74, Brazil, they're up by 25, and Hector Romero, Allah and I are clapping for you, my friend. That was a nice effort, Hector Romero. He is out of this game, 21 points. The leading scorer, Machado for Brazil, he had 20. This is J.B. Batista. If they score 100, does everybody in the arena get pizza? Because I could use a slice. I'm a little hungry too, isn't it? Chalupas, isn't that what they, <laughs> isn't that? What, wasn't there a Bulls game where they went, you know, in, in, at the United Center, and they went for 100 and everybody was ticked off? Wasn't it the Knicks? They were exactly crying about that. Hey, if you can run up the score on somebody, go ahead and do it. That's what Brazil's doing right here. The Souza with the flush, and they've reached triple figures at 1-0-1. One. Oh, one. Look at Brazil. This is unbelievable. Have not let up one. You know bit. what? You know what this looks like right here is the bench is loving it. I mean, this is fun right here for Barbosa and Nene. 
This is like Steve Spurrier back in the Florida days, <laughs> beating Florida International 70-3. to and Coach Spurrier actually coached at Duke when I was there, and when we would get beat by teams, he would try to run it up on them the next year. I remember beating a Clemson team by seven points, and then the next year beating them by 30. Steve Spurrier putting the hammer down. You know what, and, and let's talk about it. I got no problem in football, baseball, basketball, hockey, whatever. If you could pour it on a team, pour it on them. And that's not to say leave your starters in there for the whole game in a blowout, but why shouldn't the backups go out there and, and play hard and, and, and execute the style that Lula Ferrara has in here? Plus what you want to guard against, too, and your point's well taken there, Rick. If you're Coach Lula of the Brazilian team, you don't want to get into the habit of telling your players to pull back on the reins. You don't want to have them being or create bad habits of being lazy or being lackadaisical. It's tough to turn it back on and off the level of play. You want to make sure once it's on, it stays on throughout the 40-minute game. Well, you and I questioned early the FIBA World Rankings that they have Brazil 17 and they have Venezuela 21. We are seeing that, that need, there needs to be a wider spread between these two national programs. And Barbosa wears number 10 for Phoenix and with Brazil and Mariaga misses that free throw. For Brazil, he is the perfect 10. He's a fantastic player. One of the fastest players in the world, one of the best shooters in the world. And getting better, Rick. I mean, we think about two years ago when he played for the Suns, averaged 13 points per game. This year, he's averaged 18, an increase of five points per game, and he's only 24 years old. 20 seconds to go. Brazil still up in their faces. Nice little handoff, but the fumble right there by Jesus Urbina. And Giovanni back in there. Guys still giving their bodies up. I mean, this is an Olympic qualifying tournament. I'm not saying they should be giving their bodies up here with a 26 point game under 10 seconds to go, but. We have appreciated the effort from the Brazilian national team. They get out of here with a huge win. 101-75, your final. And Brazil moves to 2 and oh, They join Argentina and the United States of America as the only undefeated 2-0 and teams in this tournament. Four teams with two wins, including Canada. And for Venezuela, they are the worst team in this tournament as we speak. The only 0-3 team at the Tournament of the Americas. They just haven't played good basketball again. This is a young team. They're going to get better as time goes on, but the test is now, and right now they don't seem to be up to the test. Maybe things will change in the time to come, but let's give credit to Brazil. A well-rounded effort from a lot of different guys. We saw Machado play well. We saw Huertas play well. Murillo played well. Nene, I thought, when he came in, also did a good job amongst others as well. Congratulations to Brazil for a hard-fought win. And congratulations to Marcelinho. Machado as we go to the higher play of the game and it's from the player of the game and that is Marcelinho right here with the and one and that was three the hard way he had a lot of threes the easy way in this basketball game Machado led Brazil with 20 points and that was your higher play of the game and I'll